Hey everybody, how y'all doing? It's Patrick, and on this episode of Getting Started with Cafe Press, I'm going to talk about working with full bleed designs and getting those designs on as many products as possible. So Cafe Press has around 250 different products right now that you can upload and add your designs to, and I'd say that a good half, if not more, are actually full bleed based designs. They have everything from stickers, buttons, and magnets to curtains, floor rugs, and bedding. Now, full bleed printing is printing to the edge of whatever product it is that you're putting your design on. And I've got an example here. This is a, not a full bleed design. This is one of the standard t-shirt designs where it's got a transparent background, so the color of the t-shirt shows through. And this is the same design that's considered full bleed. This textured background is actually part of the design. And you can see here, this is the actual design, the text layout's in the middle of it, and that same design fits on all these different products. And these full bleed designs like this are really good if you're working with like patterns and textures. Here's an example of some flip flops with just a, a swimming pool water texture over them. Great for patterns. It's just a repeating pattern on a cell phone case, the same pattern on one of the bags, and again the same thing on the throw rug. So that same design works from everything from something the size of this blanket, which is 50 inches by 60 inches, down to a small cell phone case. And it's also good for photographs and paintings and things like that, like this rectangular magnet where the design goes all the way to the edge, leaving no white margin. So why would you want to create a full bleed version of a simple design, say my We Geek logo here, and just have it print on the white background on those products? Well, let's go into my logo design here, and I've uploaded a couple of full bleed products down here at the bottom. I've got the cell phone case, and the design is just printed in the middle of it. Even though this is a full bleed product, you don't have to print over the whole print area if you don't want to. So my logo in the middle looks pretty good. It's a white cell phone. It's going to be a nice plastic case, so it's going to have a nice professional look to it. So in this case, I might consider using the white background. Now if I go back and look at this messenger bag, again, this doesn't look too bad. It's got the nice white background. It's clean. It's professional. But one thing I can tell you about these products is that seen in person, they look really unfinished if this entire area is not printed. It just doesn't look right. And Cafe Press and other companies have done research and they've shown that products like this that have this large white area where you can print over the whole thing actually sell better if there is something printed over the whole thing and that white area is not left white. So if you take the time to create a full bleed version of this, even if it's just a colored background, and you're going to get better sales off those products. Now to show you how the full bleed stuff works in Cafe Press, I've created a sample one here and already uploaded and added it to a couple of products. So this is my sample image I created. And when I'm working with my full bleed images, I always create them at 6400 by 6400 pixels, at 6400 by 6400. And I found that that allows me to put the same design on as many products as possible on Cafe Press. I can do 130 different products with this one design. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is that when you upload your image and add it to products, they're not always going to fit right away. Square things will usually come in fitting okay, but odd shaped products, which are most of them, are going to have white borders around the edges. And you can see that on these stickers here, the mouse pad, the rug, the curtains, the towel, the cell phone cases, things like that. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you uploaded your full bleed design and added products is edit those products by mousing over the icon and clicking the edit button. And you'll see there's two modes up here. There's a fit mode and a fill mode. Usually these are preset for fit and what that does is fits your entire image, whatever it is, inside the borders of the actual print area, which is this black outline here. And this dotted red line around the outside of the product print zone is the bleed area. And that means your design should come out to this line at the very minimum to guarantee a decent print. Otherwise, if the printing is off a little bit for some reason, you might get a, a white line 
around wherever the print wasn't quite right. So you want to make sure that your design fills this entire area, and we do that by clicking the Fill button. And then what that does is that increases the size of your image to fill up the entire print area, including that bleed zone. So now the center product where the black outline is, that's what that cell phone case is going to look like. So once I clicked fill, if I click save here, and then come back, close that, and come back and look at my cell phone, you can see now that graphic fills up the entire space and there's no white outline anywhere. So if I come to my messenger bag here and do the same thing, click edit, and you'll see right now it's in fit mode, so my design fits within that rectangular print area. And then I click fill, now it's filling up that entire space. And click save, close this, and come back and look at your design. Now in the case of this messenger bag, you'll see that the way that it's printed, the design's a little high. It's not quite centered vertically in this visible portion of the messenger bag. And that's probably because the, the print area actually kind of folds over the top. So they've set this up to make that look like that's what it's doing here. But you can also tweak the placement of, of where your image is gonna go. Go back in and click edit. And now I've got some extra design at the top and the bottom. I can move that design up and down using the nudge buttons here. So if I want that design to go down a little bit, I can do that and then go back up. But since it's already the same width as, as the print area, I can't go left and right. It'll look like it does, but then it'll snap back because it won't let you in fill mode. It won't let you move your image out of that print area. And then if for some reason you want to recenter that, just click the center button here and it'll pop your design back in the center. But since I can kind of see this out here, I know I want to lower this just a little bit. So I'll click that a couple times and then click save and close it. And now you see my design centered a little bit better there. Now I'm going to go through and set all of these to fill. I'm just going to click Edit, Fill, Save, and then close it for all these different products here. Okay, I've gone through and I've changed all of the, the modes from this from Fit to Fill for all of these products. So you can see now there's no white borders around the edges of any of them. So now if, if this design was just a simple pattern or a texture, then I would be all set and ready to go. It would look great on every product. But say this was a design like my logo with a background on it. So if my logo filled up this entire space, it would look fine on this square sticker, but it wouldn't look very good on my rug here because the text would bleed off the edge. So looking at my test image here, I can see that everything within the green spaces and the blue spaces is going to look pretty good. It gets a little bit cut off on this bumper sticker here. But everything else out of my, my sample selection of products here, that green space looks pretty decent. So if I set, my, set this design up so my logo fit within this green area, it would look great on the cell phone cases. It would look great on this twin duvet cover. It would look good on this pillow, but it would be kind of small stuck in the center of that space. Same with the shower curtains and some of these other larger square shaped designs. And you can fix that by editing the image and increasing the size of it or the scale. Now once you're in, in fill mode you can't make it any smaller than what Cafe Press recommends but you can make your image bigger. So I can make this fill that entire space, if that's where I'm going to put my logo is in this green area, I can increase the scale and then save that. And now you'll see that green space is the predominant area that's being printed here. So I can click this design. And this one's not bad already, but maybe I'll bump it up a little bit and save it. 
So now my logo is going to fill more of that space. And I know I want to fill even more, so I'm going to bump it up a couple more. And you can mouse over and see where the, the print line and the cutoffs are here as you're doing these adjustments. And we'll take it down. 25 was too much. 23 will be good. And you can also write those numbers down and just type them in here. So the rectangular sticker and the oval sticker are, are similar in proportion. So if I type 23 here and then click outside the box somewhere, it automatically enlarges to that same size. Click Save and Close and then double check. All the corners of the green box are cut off, but I still think if my logo was centered in there, that would look fine. This one's already set. Come through and increase the scale on the mouse pad here. Checking to make sure that it's well within that print area and click Save. Close that. Now for my curtains, I can do the same thing. So I'm going to want that to fill up a much larger area, so I just click and hold that down. And now it's reached its maximum. I can't go any bigger than that. That's because on these big items like this, if you increase the size of your image too much, it's going to get pixelated and blurry and not going to look good. So Cafe Press puts a hard limit on how big you can make this design. So in this case, that's as big as it'll go. It'll be fine. And that's the same with a lot of these larger images. You know, this, these big 80 inch curtains, that's as big as it's going to be able to get. Which is why I use the, the 6400 by the 6400. So it'll look good on this super large product and those small stickers. You can see the rug is pretty much maxed out. Same on this one. And these are recent fixes, these large curtains and the large area rugs used to not work with the 6400 by 6400. I used to have to use 8000 by 8000 for those. So I'm glad they fixed that so I don't have to add a special graphic just for those two products. And the bed covers are the same way. But in this case, I don't want it to fill up the whole area because I don't want my logo hanging over the side, side of the bed. So I'm going to keep it small like that so that the design would be centered. Increase this one a little bit. Same with the king size here. Just pump it up a little bit. And within this, you can adjust. Again, maybe I want to lower the logo a little bit. So now that I've enlarged that, I can nudge this down a little bit. And there you can see the design has moved down a little bit on the, the cover. Shower curtains will max that one out. And the beach towel, and this is initially why I chose the 6400 by 6400, because on the beach towel, which is a product I definitely wanted in my shops, that's the smallest size design you can get that would fill the entire area on the beach towel. So that's why I initially chose that 6400 square pixels. And then my pillow, and this pillow is a great product, by the way. I've got several of these. Bump that up. Save it. Cell phone cases I'm going to leave as is. And we'll bump up the messenger bag here a little bit. Okay, so now you can see that using my, my test image here, that if I had a logo centered within that green area, it would look good on all these products. It might be a little small on some of them because of the size. But if you really wanted to have your this full thing filled up with a design, just make two different versions of it. Make a, a full bleed version where the image takes up most of the space, and then one where it takes up only the small central space. And then using this template image that I've got here, this is a great way for me to, to double check my designs in Photoshop or other image editor. So here's a, a little partial screen of my, my Photoshop. There's my full bleed design I made. Here's my We Geek logo. If I were to drag this over here, create a new layer, it's too big. I need to shrink that down a little bit. So I would rescale this to fit within that green space. And then I would add another layer for a background. 
and if I were to fill that with just a solid color. So now I know that, that given the, the testing I did with this image, I know that my logo is going to look good on all those products. Now one thing I'll recommend when doing these full bleeds is not using a solid color background. If you have a really complex image in the center and you need to use a solid color just because the file size is getting a little bit too big, remember you can't go over 50 megabytes for these Cafe Press images. And at 6400 by 6400, it's, that file size is going to get pretty big. But I recommend not using a solid background because sometimes you get little inconsistencies in printing or the texture of whatever it is they're being printed on and it, it doesn't look as good as it could. So at the very least, I recommend using a, a kind of a gradient fill on these products. So if I was to come in here and, and do a gradient fill using my, my dark blue to a lighter blue color, do something like this. That's going to give you a little bit more variation in the background, and it's going to hide any little printing anomalies that might come up. And even better would be to do some kind of a texture to it. Say if I do this. So now there's a little bit of a texture to the background here and any little printing anomalies will be less likely to show up. So this is the kind of thing I recommend when doing the full bleed designs. Put some kind of a texture back here, at the very least a gradient fill instead of just a solid color. But again, it's all up to you and whatever looks best with your design. So while working with full bleed images can be a lot of work and you've got a lot of resizing to do if you do a lot of these, um, it's definitely worth it in terms of the quality of the design that you're putting on the products and in getting some decent sales. And in an upcoming pro tip video, I'm going to talk about using shops and sections so you can go through the sizing process once and then reuse all these preset products to create new products with the same settings. Make this a lot easier. So check that out in an upcoming video about shops and sections. So I hope you liked the video. Please hit the thumbs up button and give me a like. I'd appreciate it and it really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more videos like this one. And until next time, what's your Wii?